My name's Kath Scott. I'm a biodiversity officer with Glasgow City Council. So my job is to look at the different wildlife about us. Urban wildlife is, is important for the, the residents and visitors to the city. Glasgow is a thriving, vibrant city. To make it even more exciting to live in, it's great to be able to go for a walk through one of the natural green spaces that are abound in the city. Wildlife in the city is just as important for us as it is really for the wildlife. So in Glasgow we've got water voles that live by wetland, a sort of traditional idea of a water vole, but we've also got these fossorial water voles that are spending more time underground and are living in grassland. So it really is very unusual in the UK. Fossorial means burrowing, so it's uh, animals that dig holes and spend a lot of time underground, a bit, a bit like a mole. So where in Glasgow did these come from? We're, we're really not sure. We've known for years that we've had wetland water voles living along ditches and farmland at the edges of the city mainly, as well as along the canal. But finding them in grassland has been really, really unusual. So we're not sure precisely where they came from, but there's theories, ideas that perhaps they've originated from the Monklands Canal before the motorway was built, or perhaps along some of the burns that have now been culverted and covered over. So they may just have had to live in grassland rather than chosen to live in grassland. The fossorial water voles in Glasgow are living in a, a variety of habitats. They were first discovered near people's gardens, but since then we've found them living in park grassland, along road verges, along the M8. One of the biggest populations is at Cranhill Park in the east end of the city. And we've also got healthy populations at Hogganfield Park as well. They feed on vegetation, they've got burrows, you'll see telltale signs of entrance holes, disturbed ground, the excavations from where they've been digging. So yeah, what, what is the difference between a fossorial water vole and your traditional water vole? So exactly the same, but just behaving differently. And again, some of the animals in Europe behave like this, so it may well be, again, a theory we'd like to do more research on, that these animals are just exhibiting a sort of ancestral behaviour that they've, they've always had, but it hasn't been expressed very much in the UK. So what, what threatens water voles? Uh, water voles are one of the fastest declining mammal species in the UK. Historically, they've been threatened by land use change. The habitat where they lived has been lost through drainage of wetlands. They also, by the recent introduction of mink, that hasn't helped because that's a predator of them as well as introduced predators. There's predators in our parks and in our open spaces that have always been there. Foxes will eat water voles. When they start moving into a more urban environment, there's a lot more predation and threat from species such as dogs and cats. And occasionally a gull would take a water vole as well. So they are, unfortunately, predated on by a number of species. But the, the more we can create the habitat for them, the more places we can create for them to live, it really just buffers the population so it can withstand the predation level. We first found them in the playground about seven years ago. Um, the children had noticed wee animals running about and parents had been phoning in to say we had rats and uh, we, we phoned up to seek advice and discovered there were water voles. We love water voles here at Avenue We are very, very lucky to have these grassland voles. They live in the grassland voles. I phoned someone and said, um, we have water voles in the school grounds. Now we're near Hugginfield Lock, but that's a long way for a wee water vole. And they said, well, I don't think they would actually travel that far. So um, they, they, that started to kick things off and we all were looking into it to find out how they got there. We haven't come up with an answer yet, but we're hoping you do. <laughs> Part 
the Seven Lochs Wetland Park project, there's a, a number of volunteering opportunities for people that wish to get involved with surveys and practical work to help water voles. Every Friday there's people out in the Seven Lochs area actually carrying out practical conservation to create a water vole habitat, to manage a water vole habitat, so there is opportunity to get involved if you want. There's a lot going on in the city to help, help the wildlife and to give people a bit of nature on the doorstep as well. You don't have to go far to find a bit of green space in Glasgow. The finding of these water voles living in grassland away from water, a really key example of how you need to update things. Our original action plan, still relevant for the wetland water voles, but now we need a whole new plan for these fossorial grassland water voles that are here in abundance and are of national significance due to the, the number, the way they're behaving. So they really do deserve their own strategy all to themselves. So we're looking at this water vole strategy, starting to write it, working with a whole host of different organisations to achieve this. There's a water vole project group. It's got a range of experts. It's got the University of Glasgow carrying out research, Seven Locks Wetland Park, who cover a large area, including all the wetlands and the grasslands that the water voles are found in. And there's Scottish Natural Heritage, RSPB Scotland, Glasgow Natural History Society, and the council are fully on board. Council has a number of different departments all working together to look at these waterfalls and to look after these waterfalls for us and future generations. Humans are one, one species, and our role is to, to protect and enhance the wildlife around us. <laughs> <laughs>